almost time to go here in game two of this doubleheader between the Alfred State Pioneers and the Wells Express. Wells to game one, five to two, thanks to 11 hits on the offensive side, highlighted by a three for four day with three RPIs for Max Odom. The Express moved to 15-11 on the year, three and four. The Pioneers fall to four and five in conference play. Wells could jump them in the conference standings with a win here in game two. Jonathan Haynes takes the ball for the Express. Here's the lineup he will face, presented by eighth-year head coach Mike Armstrong for Alfred State. Tyler Peter, he leads it off in right field. Elijah Barinas at third base, hitting second. Tyler Korski is the left fielder. He hits third. Jack Karamba is the first baseman. He is the cleanup man. Joshua Gardner is the DH. And the second baseman, Connor Kiefer is the shortstop hitting seventh. Aiden Murphy is the catcher. He is eighth. Devin Mersman is the left fielder rounding out the order. John White on the mound for Alfred State. But first, Jonathan Haynes takes the rubber for the Wells Express. Tyler Peter in the right-handed batter's box as we get set to go in game two. First pitch is roped into right field. Charging in is Valinotti, and that will bounce in front of him for a base hit. So one pitch. And it's an opposite field single for Petery. Who went over three in game one and gets it started with a first pitch single off of Jonathan Haynes. Who wears number 14 for the Express in the all-white pinstriped uniforms with Elijah Barinas in the right-handed batter's box first pitch fastball upstairs. Makes the count 1-0. Haynes, the junior from Arkport, New York. Who looks in, gives the nod. Petery with speed off of first. He's got six bags in the year. And the breaking ball upstairs. Rather, catches the top of the zone for a call. Strike makes it 1-1. One one. Haynes this season is 0-2 in 16 and a third innings. Four starts, six total appearances. This is a pickoff attempt over at first. Back with head first dive is Petery. He's got 18 strikeouts, but has had some command issues. 17 walks allowed and two home runs allowed in 16 and a third. There's the breaking ball. Called strike at the top of the zone. Makes it one and two. Barinas went one for four. One for three, I should say, as he was pinch hit for in the seventh of game one. One of only five hits for Alfred State. As the one-two is fouled back out of play. Stays right there. Haynes throughout the course of his career, those command issues have loomed. He walked 45 and 53 innings last year. Looking to battle back after the leadoff single. Here's the 1-2. And this one's laced in a right center field. That'll get down for a base hit. Odom cuts it off. Going first to third. Now pumping the brakes. Back pick at second base. Out between first and second is Petery. Wide turn around second base. And in center field, Zach Odom guns him down. James applies the back pick tag. And this single, actually, that goes as a fielder's choice. That doesn't even go as a single. And Barinas in at first base. First pitch ball makes it 1-0 on Korski, the left fielder. Here's the 1-0 called strike at the top of the zone in the breaking ball. So back-to-back -back singles, but Perinas, I should say Petery, thrown down at second base. Pickoff attempt over at second, close play. Did he get him? No, he did not. Big head first dive for Barinas. He's got 14 stolen bases on this season. Which leads the Alfred State squad. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball inside. Throw it on in second base for Miss Carroll. Runner off of the pitch. In time. Aaron is Kierdo with a flex of the cannon. Back-to-back -back singles to start off this game and back-to-back -back runners gunned down on the base paths. 
You don't see that very often. And just like that, nobody on in two outs. As Haynes sets, rocks and delivers the pitch, breaking ball low and away. Looks like that'll even it up 2-2. Two -two. Here's the pitch. Fastball just inside, and the count will go full. On Korski. Who walked twice and struck out in his soul at bat in the scorebook in game one. The fastball upstairs for a walk. The two out walk. Brings up Jack Caraba. Caraba had by far the best day of any player in game one. First pitch. Fastball just low. Caraba went three for three with an RBI. Also had a double to his name. With Korski off of first, here's the pitch. Breaking ball in the dirt, blocked by Izquierdo to make it 2-0. Caraba, the team leader with 30 RBIs. It's also third in the AMCC. Hitting 324, entering today. As Haynes rocks and delivers 2-0. Fastball grounded. Right side of the infield. James flips it to Odom who taps on the back at second base to retire the side. So one runner left on base after two hits to start off the inning. A pair of runners thrown out on the base paths. Nothing, nothing between Wells and Alfred State as we head to the bottom of the first. John White toes the mound for Alfred State, the right-handed senior from Clarence, New York. And here is the lineup. He will face presented by fifth-year head coach of the Wells Express, Ryan Stevens. Zach Odom leads it off in center field after he had lead off for the first time this season in game one of this doubleheader. Had a pretty solid day at the plate. His twin brother, Max Odom, who also had a great game in game one. It's second. He's at second base. Jacoby James is the shortstop hitting third. Aaron Izquierdo back behind the plate and in the cleanup spot. Zach Young is the first baseman. He hits fifth. A.J. Campy at third base, manning the hot corner and hitting sixth. Hitting seventh is James Camacho. He's the D.H. John Balanotti is back in the lineup. He's in right field. And Chris McLean is in left field, rounding out the order. We already saw Jonathan Haynes on the mound. As Aiden Murphy, who's the sole Player in this game that didn't play game one on the Alfred State side throws down his second base and gets us set to go here in the bottom of the first. Scoreless between Wells and Alfred State as Zach Odom will dig in. The center fielder who went two for three with a walk and a pair of runs scored in game one of this doubleheader as White's first pitch is looped foul. On the third base side off the facing of the Alfred State dugout. Odom with a single, a double, a walk, and a fly out to left field in game one. Here's White's 0-1 pitch. 
And it's looped in a shallow center. It'll stay on the infield, on the right side of the infield, where Walker picks it out of the air for out number one. That'll bring out Max Odom, the second baseman. And Max had the best offensive day of any express player. He went three for four with three RBIs and a run scored, including a pair of RBI doubles. First pitch he sees is nubbed right back to the pitcher in white who takes a couple steps off the mound to his right, picks up with the bare hand and throws on to first. So two quick outs for John White. And White's had a very solid year and a tremendous career on the mound for Alfred State. He's pitched over 145 innings, over almost 40 games in his career. He's making his 25th career start today, so he's got the experience. Here's the first pitch to Jacoby James. It is a called strike at the bottom of the zone. 40 innings this season for White. He's posted a 4.95 ERA, 33 strikeouts in 40 innings. Wave and a miss. Makes it 0-2 on James. Who had an RBI double in the first inning of game one. Also walked, but finished the day one for three. Here's the 0-2. Breaking ball low. James, the shortstop today. A 424 hitter on the season. Entering this ball game. 1-2. Ranking ball low and away, evens it 2-2. Two and two. White had a great season last year where he went 4-0 and on the mound with a 2-5-9 ERA. He was an all-conference player in the AMCC for Alfred State. Looking to get back to those ways. Here's the 2-2, two -two, breaking ball low and away, and it'll go full. He's only walked nine guys in four innings this season. So strong command, low pitch count. Nothing crazy in terms of the stuff. Doesn't throw that hard in the low 90s. And here's a payoff pitch to James. Is roped in a six-hole dive by the shortstop in Kiefer. But that will trickle into left field for, an, for a two-out single for James. Who continues to mash at the plate. And that brings up Aaron Izquierdo. On the topic of White, who was an AMCC Pitcher of the Week just a couple of weeks ago after 13 innings against Ferrum and New Paltz combined as this one chopped up the middle. It's going to be the second baseman, Walker, who picks it up, steps on the bag to retire this side. One runner left on base, one hit in the inning for the Express. We head to the top of the second. Scoreless between Wells and Alfred State. The Express designed to create no runs on one hit. It was not a zero entering the top of the second.
Back in the top of the second, pair of hits for either side in the first. But aside from that, rather uneventful as Jonathan Haynes back out onto work. Joshua Gardner in the right-handed batter's box. The six-man leads it off with a ground ball snagged by James. Rather, that'll trickle into the outfield, trickling through the left side of the infield up the middle. Out of the reach of James. And in the center field for a base hit. That is technically the third hit of the day for Alfred State. But two runners were thrown out on the base pads in the top of the first. So looking to work around a leadoff single for the second straight inning. After Peter, he had one of the first pitch of the game is Haynes. First pitch, breaking ball called strike on the outer third. And the count goes 0-1. Caleb Walker, the junior second baseman in from the left side. He's hitting 267 with an 814 OPS on the season. Hayes, the righty, kicks and fires. And yeah, the breaking ball popped foul behind zone, played out of play, makes it 0 and 2. Walker 0 for 3 with two strikeouts against Xander Johnson in game one of this doubleheader, though. Here's the 0 2 from Haynes. Fastball low and away. And talking on. The topic of game one, a 5-2 win for Wells, but Xander Johnson was the story of that ball game. You can say pitching in general between Johnson and Cam Heyman, who got the save. Here's the 1-2. Just outside, bounces off the glove of his Kierdo, but not far enough for Gardner to advance. Johnson with five and two-thirds, four hits, two runs, with six strikeouts in game one. Cam Heyman threw an inning and a third shutout with only one hit. As the breaking ball just low, makes the count three and two. And we mentioned how crucial in inning number one, the command is going to be for Jonathan Haynes. Three, two. Breaking ball grounded. Right side of the infield, through for a base hit. Out of the reach of the leaping Young, who is ranging to his right, gave a dive, but it's in the center field for the second consecutive hit to lead it off here in the second. That'll bring up Connor Kiefer, the junior shortstop. The shortstop one, Kiefer. Kiefer, a 233 average on the season, went 0 for 2 with a walk in game one. And as we mentioned, Jack Caraba was one of only three players for Alfred State that had those hits because he went 3 for 3. Kiefer from the right side, first pitch breaking ball. Hit him. Looks like it grazed the side. Of the pant leg. And the hit batsman will load the bases. Command and pitching has been key for Wells this season. And it's going to particularly be key against this Alfred State team. Which we didn't see in game one. But has a dominant offense. As the first pitch to Aiden Murphy. He's waved on and missed to make it 0-1. Murphy came in as a pinch hitter in the ninth inning for Barinas and got a single for the fifth hit of the game for Alfred State. So he's in the lineup as the catcher. Here's the breaking ball called strike on the outside corner, makes it 0-2. Murphy taking over the catching duties for Anthony Snyder. Snyder went 0 for in game one. The two have rotated in and out of the position this season as the 0-2 pitch from Haynes fouled off. Went with the elevated fastball, looking to challenge the sophomore backstop. Murphy this season hitting 283 with eight RBIs in 16 games. There's another 0 2 foul back behind his own plate and out of play yet again. It'll stay right there. Haynes, the Washington and Jefferson transfer. Pitched two seasons at Washington and Jefferson. A career 540 ERA. As the 0-2 again. This one sky deep into right center field. Sending Valinati back on the run. That'll split the outfielders in right center and roll all the way to the wall. Gardner scores. Walker scores. Here comes Kiefer. It's a three-run. Bases clearing double for Aiden Murphy. And a 3-0 lead. For Alfred State, here in the top of the second. A 
And just like that, 11 RBIs in the year for Murphy. Walker, Gardner, Kiefer all score and a 3 to nothing lead for the 9-hitter, Devin Mersman. He went 0 for 3 in game 1. Here with no outs and a runner on second base. First pitch to Mersman. Fastball called strike on the outer third. Mersman hit 180, hitting 184 this season with a homer and 10 RBIs. At the ninth spot in the Alfred State order. Shows bunt on the breaking ball, drops it down. It's right back to Haynes, who throws on a first base to get the out. Advancing up to third base is Murphy, so another runner 90 feet away. Here with one out in the top of the second, already a 3 0 lead for the Pioneers. A couple sack bunts in game one as well for Alfred State. A couple of attempts as well. So we saw the attempts there from Mike Armstrong willing to do it. And now the infield will creep in for the express with one out. Top of the order back to Petery. First pitch fastball upstairs towards the chin. And the count goes 1-0. Oh. Petery singled and then was thrown out between second and third base. His time is going to be called and Ryan Stevens is going to take the second time today a mid-at-bat mound visit with a 1-0 count on Petery. Petery took a little bit of a a little bit too wide of a turn around second and third uh, around second on his way to third and was gunned down by Zach Odom in center field through a dart on the line to James at second base who just applied the tag as the mound meeting dissipates Is Kierdo in the infield head back to their respective positions. Steven back to the first base dugout. And a runner 90 feet away for Peter in a 1 0 count. Here's the pitch. Fastball upstairs. Makes it 2 0. This is an Alfred State team that lost the MCC MVP last season. Nick Sirs, who hit 19 homers. There's a fastball upstairs over the head of Petery. And the count will go 3 0. Sirs transferred to the Division II level for American International. And as the 3 0 pitch is pop foul by its own plate. The leadoff man, Petery, swinging 3 0. Let's one rip on the fastball. Timing's right as he fouls it just back. Here's the 3 1 from Haynes. Fastball, cold strike at the top of the zone. Peter was a step out of the batter's box on his way to first base, thinking he had ball four, but gets summoned back by the home plate umpire. And a big 3 2 pitch coming from Jonathan Haynes. Haynes sets with a runner on third base. One out, rocks and delivers. 3-2, foul back. So Petery stays alive. Petery hitting 307 on this season, an 803 OPS with a homer and six RBIs. Everyday leadoff spot for the Pioneers. There's the 3-2. Fastball runs inside. We'll go all the way to the backstop. Coming home is Murphy, and he will score. On the wild pitch, it was up towards the hands of Peter. He, first, I thought that hit him, but just missed his hands all the way to the metal backstop. And another run on the board. Four to nothing. Alfred stayed on top just like that, and the command struggles continue for Jonathan Haynes. He's already allowed five hits. Also has walked two and hit one. As Elisha Barinas will step in from the right side, run on first and one out, pick off a tapped over at first base. No tag applied by Zach Young. Is Petery, who has six stolen bases on the year, back in with a head first dive. Haynes sets. Another peek over to first base as he rocks and delivers. First pitch called strike at the top of the zone to Petery, excuse me, to Barinas, 
who singled and was thrown out trying to steal second base in game one. Another pickoff attempt. Back easily, Petery. Petery six for seven on stolen bases this year. Here's the 0-1. Breaking ball low and away. Arenas, the senior third baseman. The AMCC leader in hits. He's got 43 in 29 games. Is the fastball low. Kicks away from Izquierdo. Will allow Petrie, Petrie to move up to second base on the pass ball. And the count will go 2-1. and one. Arenas, who hit 327 last year in his fourth year as a starter for Alfred State. Here's the 2-1. Fastball roped in a right center field, ranging over to his left is Odom, who cuts it off. Wandering a little too far off the bag was Peter E, so he'll get a throw from Odom. Zach Odom, that is, in center field. Over to second base, but back just ahead of the throw is Peter E. Who thought he, that was a, a gapper off the bat of Barinas. So two outs for Tyler Korski. Walked his last time to the plate in the first. Up with a runner on second. And two outs here in the top of the second. Four runs are across already in the inning for Alfred State. First pitch fastball low. Makes it 1-0 on Korski. Hitting 312 with an 817 OPS of the season. Three homers, 17 RBIs. To the three batter in the Alfred State order. Haynes fires home 1-0. Breaking ball nubbed foul on the third base side toward the on-deck circle where Josh Caraba, who's only been retired two times over the course of this doubleheader, awaits in the batter's box. As Haynes, with two outs runner on second, 1-1 one, one pitch. Wave and a miss on the fastball. Goes 1-2. and two. Haynes in his fifth start of the season. The one two. Check swing and a ball in the dirt. Skips away from his Kierto a step. No swing. And advancing up to third base on the pass ball is Korski. So another runner 90 feet away was a pretty good breaking ball in the dirt. Got Korski to check his swing and take the bat off his shoulder, but did not go around. And the count two and two. Haynes pitching for the first time since the Castleton State game as a breaking ball low and away will make the count full three two. Haynes pitched one one inning out of the bullpen versus Castleton. His last two appearances have been out of the bullpen. Here's the three two, fastball low for ball four. Second walk, third total, free 90 of the inning by Haynes. And runners on the corners for Jack Caraba, who is the ninth batter to come to the plate this inning for Alfred State. Caraba, who is one of the best hitters in the AMCC this season. Third in the conference with 30 RBIs. First pitch, breaking ball up and in, makes it 1-0. Caraba, 324 average on this season with an 854 OPS. He went 3-for-3 three three with an RBI and a double in game one. Runners on first and third, fastball, called strike on the inside corner, makes it 1-1. One As Haynes peers in, gives the nod, sets, pickoff attempt over at first base. Where Korski is back with a dive. He's got six stolen bases this season for the Pioneers, who are now four and five in conference play after the loss to Wells 
in game one. Five to the final there. Another breaking ball outside makes it two and one. And on the delayed steal, Korski will move up to second base. Try to get himself caught into, into a rundown, but obviously no throw. Is your focus on the batter at hand slash the runner at third base, which is Petery. And here's the 2-1. He's roped in a left field, sending McLean back a couple steps before he tracks it down with an over-the-shoulder catch to end the inning. Not before four runs come across, highlighted by three hits, a pair of walks in the inning for Alfred State. 4 nothing. Pioneers lead as we head to the bottom of the second on AM 6C TV. Five, six, seven, do up for the Express back in the bottom of the second inning. A four nothing lead for Alfred State on three hits and a pair of walks in the top of the frame. Nine batters came to the frame, came to the bat in the top of the frame for Alfred State. John White back on a work first pitch to Young is blasted out to deep left field, sending Korski back at the warning track towards the wall, and it's caught just in front of the wall. Zach Young. Just as he did in game one, actually. It was the fifth inning when he sent a ball to the deepest part of the park in left center. A missile. But it's tracked down by Korski for out number one. Gave it a ride. Brings up A.J. Campy. First pitch breaking ball. Rolled right down to the infield. Charging is the second baseman Walker on to first for out number two. And two quick outs. For John White here in the second. That'll bring up James Camacho from the right side. First pitch breaking ball, call strike at the top of the zone. Camacho went one for three in game one. It's a big wave and a miss to the breaking ball. Makes it 0-2. Four pitches this inning. Two strikes to Camacho and before that. Well, ground outs for a ground out and a fly ball. Here's the 0-2. Breaking ball, wave and a miss for strike three. Murphy scoops it out of the dirt. Throws on a first base to finish off the strikeout. Five pitches, a strikeout. A ground ball and a pop fly. What an inning for John White. Three up, three down as we head to the top of the third on AMCC TV. Four to nothing. Alfred State leads.
out here is number 24, Josh Gardner. Top of the third, 5-6-7, due up in the Alfred State order. And a 4-0 lead for Alfred State. And a new pitcher on the mound for Wells. It's Zach Kronk who will take over for Jonathan Haynes as Kronk's first pitch, a breaking ball called strike on the outside corner to the right-handed hitting Joshua Gardner. For Kronk this season, he has been stellar in relief. 12 appearances, two saves, 28 in the third innings pitch, a 2.86 ERA. As the count goes 1-1 on Gardner. He singled and scored in the second. 21 strikeouts for for Kronk this season as the breaking ball outside. Makes it 2-1. And, and Jonathan Haynes' day is done. As that one fouled down the left field line to make the count 2-2. Two and two. Wheels coming off a little bit in the second inning where nine different Alfred State players came to bat. Fastball inside. And the count will go full on Gardner. Haynes goes two innings with four runs and five hits. Is that one sky down the right field line? Giving a look as the first baseman Young. It'll bounce foul out of play. Three walks and a hit bat spin by Haynes in his two innings of work. He's gotten some work out of the bullpen, but some of those command struggles continuing. Here comes the 3-2 pitch from Kronk. Fastball up and out for ball four. Gardner puts together a strong at-bat. But Haynes loses him late. Excuse me. Kronk loses him late. Gardner's reached both times today. And that brings up Caleb Walker. And if you're the Express, what you don't want is con command issues to continue. Already down 4 nothing here on the top of the third. Caleb Walker in from the left side against the righty crunk. First pitch fastball low and in. Walker singled and scored in that second inning where nine different batters came to the plate for the Pioneers. There's the 1-0. He's popped up on the right side of the infield. Sky high for Max Odom, and he tracks it down. Just a couple steps in front of his second base position for out number one. Connor Kiefer in from the right side. First pitch is chopped foul on the left side of the infield. Down the fencing which runs parallel to the third base line. One out runner on first for Kiefer. Hitting 233 on the season. Went 0 for 2 with a walk in game one. As the 0-1 is chopped foul. Down the left field line again. Count will go 0 and 2. Kronk looking to continue his success on the mound. Some questions about the Wells bullpen. After the pitching staff did struggle last season, especially down the stretch when you need the depth most. As a check swing on a breaking ball did not go around. As Kierdo keeps it in front. She'll keep Gardner at first base, but. Kronk has been such a bright spot out of the bullpen this season. Another pickoff attempt over at first. I mean, the entirety of this Wells team in general on the pitching side, still a 6-3-9 team ERA, which you'd like to get down a little bit. Is a wave and a miss for strike three. First strikeout victim of Kronk is Connor Kiefer. And there's two outs here in the third. Been some pleasant surprises, though, with Mason Smith, 
Xander Johnson on the mound. And he's the first pitch fastball for a strike to Aiden Murphy. But Kroc, who's led the team in innings pitched with 28.1, all coming over 12 relief appearances, has been stellar. There's a called strike on the outside corner. Kroc, by pretty solid margin over Nascimento, leads the team in innings pitched. Here's the 0-2. Fastball just upstairs. And the count will go one and two. Kroc looking around, looking to work around that leadoff walk. Is a breaking ball outside. Evens it up at two. Here's the pitch. Grounded up the middle out of the reach of the leaping James. That'll trickle into center field for a base hit. Off the bat of Aiden Murphy, he's got himself a pair of hits already on the day. And runners on first and second with two outs for Devin Mersman, the nine batter in the Alfred State order. Kronk from Newfield, New York. Attended Newfield High School. He was a big wave and a miss. On the breaking ball. The junior. With runners on first and second. Roxy delivers. And this one laced foul down the right field line out of play. Kronk struggled a little bit last year too in 15 games. A 7-1-5 ERA. With 14 strikeouts in 22 innings. But... As, as I mentioned, he's just been stellar this season. And he's the pitch, breaking ball, likes to new center field, right to Odom, doesn't have to move a muscle, right to his mitt for out number three to retire the side. One hit in the inning, two runners left on base, still four to nothing, Alfred State, as we head to the bottom of the third on AMCC TV. Bottom of the third inning, 8-9 top, due up for the Express. 4-0, Alfred State on top after a four spot in the second inning. Wells, who only has one hit on the offensive side, will look to get going. It'll start with John Valinati. The right fielder digs in from the right side. First pitch breaking ball, call a strike on the inside corner out of, John, out of the hand of John White, who has been stellar this season, has continued that so far today with a strikeout, only one base runner, Allowed is the 0-1. Breaking ball in the dirt makes it 1-1. One one. That sole hit came off the bat of Jacoby James with a two-out single in the first. Since then, four straight retired for White, who rocks and delivers. 1-1 one, one breaking ball looped in a left center. Tracking out is the shortstop keeper that'll skip over his head for a base hit. John Valinati leads it off in the third. With a single second hit of the day for Wells. 
And Chris McLean, the nine hitter, will step up. McLean hitting 309 on the season with a homer and 11 RBIs. He went 0 for 2 with a sack bunt in game one of this doubleheader. 5 2 win for the Express. First pitch McLean sees. Breaking ball, wave and a miss. We talked about it earlier, too, that White is a guy that doesn't walk any guys. He also doesn't strike out very many guys. A command pitcher doesn't throw all that hard. As the 0 1 breaking ball is fouled behind to him plate. We've also already seen it with two straight breaking balls to start off the count to McLean. That he is not afraid to throw anything at any point in any count. As White rocks home in the breaking ball's nub foul behind home plate. After White, who was all conference last season, was the AMCC pitcher of the week just a couple of weeks ago, went 2 0 over a week against Farum and New Paltz. Including a complete game, seven inning game with six strikeouts against New Paltz. With Valinati off of first, here's the 0-2. Breaking ball ground on the left side of the infield. It's the second baseman at Walker. On to second for one, on to first. Not in time. And McLean beat it out. So just a fielder's choice. Which is the best case scenario there. Nice play up the middle. Kiefer and Walker combining to get the lead runner. And put a runner on first base for Zach Odom. Odom 0 for 1 on the day. A pop-up to the right side of the infield is first A-B. As the first pitch is line foul over the fencing on top of the Alfred. Rather, I should say with the Wells dugout on the first base side. Zach Odom hitting the leadoff spot, flip-flopping with Max Odom, who's been the leadoff man for every single game this season for Wells. Pickoff attempt over at first. Where McLean is back with a dive. McLean with one stolen base in the season. But Zach Odom in his first game as the leadoff man. Went two for three with a run scored in game one. And as the breaking ball is sky foul again down the right field line. And out of play the count will go 0-2. With McLean leading off of first base. White peers in. A long look. And now he sets. Comes home 0-2. Breaking ball nub right back up the middle. The shortstop keeper flips. Now throws on a first. And looked like he was going to initially spin towards second base. And feed Walker. Didn't have a play there as McLean was there. Threw on a first base. It was wide up the line. Would have been close regardless, so that'll go as an infield single for Zach Odom. And to the first three in the inning of reached, brings up Max Odom with runners on first and second. Wells down by four, but a big chance here for Max Odom. First pitch breaking balls, fouled by its own plate. And out of play to go 0-1. And Max had himself a tremendous game in game one. Three for four. With three RBIs and a run scored, including two RBI doubles. We're going to keep that momentum rolling here in game two. Long pause from White. Here's the 0-1 fastball upstairs. Odom grounded out right back to the pitcher his last time to the plate in the first inning. As White rocks and fires. And this one is laced on a line. Right to the shortstop keeper. On to second in time. Just like that. The pitcher's best friend. A double play. The line drive right to Kiefer. A step off the bag. Was McLean. And he is thrown out to end the inning. The double play. A beauty from Kiefer. One runner stranded on base. Two hits in the inning. 4 nothing. Alfred State still leads. As we head to the top of the fourth on AMCC TV.
Zach Kroc on for his second inning of work, and he'll face the top of the Alfred State order. Back at the top of the fourth, 4 nothing with the Pioneers on top is Kronk's first pitch to the leadoff man, Petery, is roped on a hop to the shortstop, James, who picks it up, throws it across the diamond in time. One pitch, one out here in the fourth inning. A strong shutout inning in the third in Kronk's first of relief. Coming in for Jonathan Haynes, who struggled in two innings, allowing four runs. All coming on five hits. And Elijah Barinas will dig in. Singled and flew out to center field. As the breaking ball is hammered out to deep left field. McLean ranging out. And that is foul just to the left of the pole. And into the parking lot. Hit that one a long way. But all it is is a long strike. 0-1. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball, skied foul down the right field line, sending Valinotti towards the fence. Foul territory, he well, won't get there. Bounces off the base of the wall down the line. In play, had to run a long way, but couldn't track it down. Oh, and two. On Barina, who. Hitting 384 on the season with a 928 OPS. 17 RBIs for the senior. As the 0 2. Called strike three on the outer third. The second strikeout in relief for Zach Kronk. And two outs here in the fourth. That'll bring up Tyler Korski. Korski from Elmira, New York. Here's the first pitch. Breaking ball roped in a right center field. Valinotti now ranges in. In right field, he tracks it down for out number three. A quick three outs, highlighted by a strikeout in a 1 2 3 inning for Zach Kronk. 4 0. Alfred State still leads as we head to the bottom of the fourth on AMCC TV. Back in the bottom of the fourth, four to nothing, Alfred State on top. And Jacoby James, the three man, will lead it off for the Express offense. John White, who has been stellar through three innings, back on to work in the righty righty matchup. First pitch out of the hand of White. He's a fastball low for a ball to James, who singled and was stranded at first base in the first. Enters today, hitting 424 on the season, but for sixth in the AMCC. White, the big righty, rocks and delivers, 1L. And the breaking ball is skied foul down the right field line. And out of play onto the golf course on the other side of the right field fence. Nine holes here on the campus of Wells College where a majority of the foul balls on the right side of the field go. There's the 1-1. Breaking ball is roped right back up the middle, skipping over top of the mound. 
And a leadoff single here in the fourth for Jacoby James. His second hit of the day. And for James, that is his 13th multi-hit game of the season, which leads the team and brings up Aaron Izquierdo. Wells down 4 to nothing after a four spot in the second inning by the Alfred State offense. Looking to get the heart of the order brewing here. The cleanup man is Kiero in from the right side. First pitch breaking ball dished outside. Makes it 1-0. Is Kiero grounded into a fielder's choice his last time to the plate. So a 390 hitter on the season. Went one for three in game one of this doubleheader between the Express and the Pioneers. The pickoff attempt. James back with a head first dive. Over at first base, no tag applied by the first baseman, Caraba. But speed off of first base for James. He's got six bags in the year in seven attempts. Long look over for White, who now sets and delivers. And the fastball is now right side of the infield. Walker goes to second for one. On to first. Not in time. A bang, bang play, but is Kierdo hustling down the line and beats it out. James out at second on the fielder's choice. So one out and a runner on first base in the form of Is Kierdo for Zach Young. And Young gave the ball a ride his first time to the plate. Smoked the ball into the left center field gap. The fastball low. The deepest part of the ballpark with the fencing jets out over 400 feet. And... Korski's back was to the wall when he made that play in left center field. And as the 1-0 pitch is a wave and a miss. Throw down to second base. Izquierdo off on the pitch. The throw is not in time as Izquierdo with a feet first slide just ahead of the tag applied by the shortstop Kiefer. And Izquierdo gets himself stolen base number 12 on the season which will tie him for second on the team with Max Odom. And a runner in scoring position for the first time today for the Express. With a 1-0 count on Young. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball, big wave and a miss. Evens it at 1-1. One one. We talked about it earlier, but White, the fastball, the curveball, the changeup, Will throw any pitch in any count. And a big loopy curveball there. Catches Young way off balance. Long look at his Kyoto at second base. Here's the 1-1. One, one. And this one is laced at the deep center field. Sending Mersman back in front of the warning track. He tracks it down for out number two. Is Kyoto ready to tag from second. But it's just a little too close for comfort. And he'll stay right there. So Young with hard contact in both of his at-bats, but both resulting in outs. And that'll bring up A.J. Campy from the right side with his Kierdo off second. Two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. A 4 nothing lead for Alfred State. And John White is still only allowed four hits with no runs coming across. First pitch to Campy is skied into deep right center. It's the right fielder, Petery, taking a few steps back. Now a couple to his left, and he ranges under it to retire the side. Working around the leadoff single is John White. He has been stellar. 4 nothing. Alfred State leads as we head to the top of the fifth on AMCC TV.
Back at the top of the fifth inning. Four to nothing the lead for Alfred St. Zach Kronk on to work for his third inning. And the first pitch is Jack Caraba. The four hitter is fouled on the third base side off the facing of the Alfred State dugout to go 0-1. Caraba 0 for 2 on the day. Kronk in his third inning of relief. He's been lights out after a 1-2-3 inning in the fourth. As the breaking ball is grounded to James, ranging to his left at shortstop across the second base bag. And in time, nicely done by Jacoby James for out number one. And Caraba, who had three RBI hits in game one, has been retired his first three times to the plate here in game two. Brings up Joshua Gardner. He's reached twice today, a single in the second, a walk in the third. He came around to score in the second. Here's the first pitch. Fastball's fouled back behind to home plate and out of play. Count goes 0-1. Gardner went 0-3 for 3 in game one. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Breaking ball just low and in. Hitting 167 entering today on the season. Here's Kronk. Roxon delivers the 1-1, breaking ball just inside. And the count will go 2-1. A couple of shakes now, then out, and the 2-1 pitch from Kronk is shot down the third baseline and fair. Skipping over the third base bag out of the reach of Campy. On his horse around first now, hitting the brakes is Gardner with a one-out single. So Caleb Walker will step up with a runner on first and one out. First pitch breaking ball is popped foul on the third base side over top of the third base Alfred State dugout. Walker, the lefty, singled and scored in the second inning. Up now with Gardner on first. Gardner's reached all three times today. As the breaking ball is popped sky high in his shallow right field. It's Valinati ranging in, and he calls off his second baseman, Odom, tracking out for out number two. Caleb Walker on the base pads this season with three stolen bases and four attempts. Alfred State already on top, four to nothing. Connor Kiefer steps up, a strikeout, a hit by a pitch. First pitch he sees, rolled on the left side of the infield. Jacoby James will go the easy way to Odom, who steps on the second base bag to retire the side. Working around the one-out single is Zach Kronk, who stays dominant. 4 to nothing. Alfred State leads as we head to the bottom of the fifth on AMCC TV. Back in the bottom of the fifth inning, four to nothing. Alfred State on top, and for the Express, it'll be seven, eight, nine 
the bottom of the order digging in against John White, who has been stellar. He's only allowed four hits, zero runs through four innings of work with one strikeout, zero free passes allowed as well as the first pitch of the right-handed in Camacho is grounded up the middle for a base hit. Make it five hits. James Camacho gets on base for the first time today. And a leadoff single here in the bottom of the fifth for the Express to bring up John Valinati, who singled his last time to the dish. Valinati, the junior right fielder. Who got an off day in game one of this doubleheader. It was a 5-2 to two win for Wells. as the first pitch fastball wave and a miss on the elevated heat out of the hand of John White. And the count goes 0-1. Valinati, who's been mixed in in right field with A.J. Campy, the freshman, is a breaking ball. Pushed outside. Rather, a called strike on the outside corner makes it 0-2. Campy not in the lineup here in game two, but he's been on a lot of them lately. The freshman, been the only freshman to get any starting playing time this season is the pickoff attempt over at first base. Where Camacho is back with a dive. Camacho this season, one stolen base in one attempt. As White peers in and sets. Comes home 0 2. Valinati just outside. And the count will go 1 and 2. Valinati, limited playing time the last few weeks after starting for the first five to begin the season. Had some early season struggles, so that's a reason, but can't be the other. As the breaking ball upstairs makes it two and two. Because Campy's worked his way into the starting lineup. In 17 games, though, for Valinati, a 277 average, a homer and seven RBIs. Two, two, breaking ball outside, and the count will go full. Valinati, the junior from Babylon, New York. Was an everyday starter last year, hit 250. With Camacho off of first and no outs. Here's the 3 2. Fastball low and away for ball four. And that'll be, bring Chris McLean to the plate with runners on first and second and no outs. Clean grounded into a fielder's choice. His last down to the plate. Came in the third inning. Pickoff attempt over at second base on the pickoff play run by the shortstop Kiefer. But back with a head first dive is Camacho. Long set from White. First pitch, breaking ball, nub foul towards the would-be on deck circle on the Alfred State side. McLean this season, hitting 309 in 25 games, a homer and 11 RBIs. As White. Long pause again. Rocks and delivers. McLean shows bunt. Drops it down the first baseline. First baseman Caraba picks it up. Throws on to first. Not in time. Ball will roll up the first baseline. Coming home is Camacho. Valinotti gets the stop sign. And the bunt pays up big time. Chris McLean pushes a run home. We'll see how that goes in the scorebook. That might be an infield single. And then we'll see if the run comes home on the throw or not. Looks like it will. So... That's going to go as an infield single on the bunt hit for McLean because that would have probably would have been safe at first base. 
because Karaba initially pump fake towards third base. But instead, the throw just deflected off the glove of Karaba, skipped a few feet up the line. And it's a 4-1 game here in the bottom of the fifth. Runners on the corners for the top of the order, Zach Odom. He represents the tying run. First pitch, fastball called a strike on the outside corner. First three have reached here in the fifth. All got started thanks to the Camacho single up the middle. And he comes around to score. And Zach Odom was one for two on the day with a single in the third. Looking to come up big time. The 0-1 grounded down the right field line and foul. So it goes 0-2 on Odom. Third on the team with 20 RBIs. Does have a homer. Six total extra base hits this year for the senior from Elmira, New York. As White sets, runners down the corners. He delivers 0-2. Breaking balls blooped in a right field. Coming in is Petery, and that will drop foul. A little bit to the right of the chalk down the line. Odom kind of threw the bat head at it. Looking just to stay alive on the looper on the outside part of the zone. Count stays 0-2. Hard of the order, Max Odom, Jacoby James, Izquierdo, Lumi. With no outs and runners on the corners. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Fastballs fouled off again. White with White went with the elevated fastball. Trying to blow it by Zach Odom, but gets a piece of it again. He's not going down without a fight. The set from White. The 0-2 again. And this one's grounded to the shortstop. Picking it up is Kiefer behind the second base bag. And they flip to second base. Well, they'll get McLean on a fielder's choice. But coming home is John Valinati. So it's an RBI fielder's choice for Zach Odom to make this a two-run game and the tying run at the plate in the form of Max Odom. Zach with the team lead, 15 stolen bases, which is third in the conference off of first base. We'll see if they put him in motion. As the first pitch, he skied foul on the first base side over top of the Wells dugout onto the green grass out of play on one. As White. Comes home with the 0-1, and the fastball is lifted out to deep right center field, sending Petery back, tracking towards the warning track. A nice over-the-shoulder grab, and he makes the play for out number two. Max Odom roped it to the opposite field, sending Petery a long way back. Just in front of the warning track in the deepest part of the ballpark, in right center where the soccer-slash-lacrosse field corner Jets out. It's out number two. Brings up Jacoby James. He's two for two on the day with a pair of singles. Looking to extend this inning, which started with four straight runners reaching base. The first pitch to James. Big wave and a miss on the fastball. Goes 0-1. James right now, his average is over 430 on the season after a two-hit game. As White sets, here's the 0-1 pitch to James. Fastball called strike on the inner third, and it goes 0-2. Now you're in defensive swing mode. Pickoff attempt over at first back with the eye of his Odom. Mentioned the speed of Zach Odom should score on extra bases. And Jacoby James, he's the team leader in extra base hits. Runner off on the pitch. Swing and a miss on the fastball regardless. 
So James goes down on strikes, but not before two runs come across in the inning. 4-2, to two, Alfred State leads as we head to the top of the sixth on AMCC TV. Eight nine top of the order due up for Alfred State back in the top of the sixth inning four to two the lead in favor of the Pioneers back on for his fourth inning of relief is Zach Cronk and he has been stellar only a pair of hits allowed with two strikeouts and zero runs allowed by the right hander in relief as Aiden Murphy the catcher will dig in from the right side first pitch breaking ball swing and a miss for strike one Murphy is two for two on the day had a bases clearing three RBI double back in the second. Is the uh, one from Kronk, another breaking ball that time, just outside. Evens it at 1-1. One and one. Talking about it earlier, but Murphy splitting the catching duties this season with Anthony Snyder. It's the fastball called strike on the outer third. Makes it 1-2. and two. And this is a battle that has moved on into the regular season. The two catching both ends of the doubleheader today. As the 1-2 breaking ball swing and a miss for strike three. Kronk with his third strikeout of the game Murphy down on strikes, one out here in the top of the sixth. Now back on the stage will pour is Devin Mersman. That brings up Devin Mersman, the nine batter in the Alfred State order. First pitch, he sees is a breaking ball called strike on the inner third out of the hand of Kronk. The right-hander working quickly. Mersman takes a step out of the batter's box, but immediately back on the rubber, ready to deliver. Is Kronk, another breaking ball. This one lashed into right center field. Ranging in is Valinati, a step, and he makes the play on the run for out number two. So a pair of quick outs to start it off here in the top of the sixth. On the strikeout, the fly ball on a the line drive. Hard hit the other way by Mersman to Valinati. And that brings us back to the top of the order. Top of the order, Tyler Pettery. He's 0 for 1 on the day. Excuse me, I should say one for two. Has a single, a walk, and a ground out. As the first pitch breaking ball low and out makes it one and oh. Kronk fires the one out. It's a fastball inside. Kronk who throws with a little bit of an awkward three quarters motion. Starts always with a little bit of an open stance and kind of closes off his body so gets a lot of horizontal movement as a fastball foul down the right field line out of play makes it two and one. Almost throws across his body which obviously helps with his slider and adds the deception on the fastball as the two one. Breaking ball is looped into deep right center field now sending Odom back in front of the warning track. He makes the play just in front of the wall. Tracks it down to retire the side. A very nice play by Zach Odom in center. Another 1 2 3 inning for Zach Kronk as we head to the bottom of the sixth. 4 to 2, Alfred State leads on AMCC TV.
Back in the top of the sixth, back in the bottom of the sixth inning, four to two, Alfred State on top, and it'll be four, five, six due up in the Wells Express order, starting with Aaron Izquierdo, the cleanup man, against John White, who's been stellar today as the righty's first pitch, the right-handed hitting Izquierdo is an off-speed just inside. Count goes one and zero. White was stellar, only allowing three hits until the fifth inning where he allowed a pair of runs and a walk and two hits. It's a wave and a miss on the breaking ball. Makes it one and one. A, a rare walk out of the hand of White, who's barely allowed any this season, it was kind of what sparked the rally as the one one. It's a breaking ball. It's like got a piece of it. Here's Kierdo flipping it foul. But White has only walked nine players, nine batters in 40 innings this season. And it was a walk to John Valinati, which got the rally started. Also a single from RB, a single from Camacho and McLean in the inning. As White with a long look in, and Izquierdo will break this stalemate, stalemate and call a timeout. Stare down in between the two. As Izquierdo digs back in from the right side, and the 1-2 is nubbed right back to the pitcher. White throw on to first. Izquierdo hustling down the line, but the throw just ahead of the runner for out number one. Bring up Zach Young. 0 for 2. But gave the baseball a ride at both times to the plate. First pitch to the power hitting right-hander. Here's the breaking ball outside. First at-bat, a missile in a deep left field to the warning track. Second at-bat to dead center. Just in front of the fence is the 1-0. Is laced in a right center field. That's down for a base hit. Cutting it off is the center fielder Mersman. And Young with some hard contact finally comes away with a hit. His first of the day. And for the Wells, that is their seventh hit of the day. As many hits as Alfred State. As Campy will dig in. Campy at third base. Here in game two of this doubleheader. First pitch, fastball low. Kicks away a step from the catcher, Murphy. Picks it up, and no throw over to second base. Zach Young reaches on the pass ball. And with the tying run at the plate, Young in scoring position for Campy, who's been clutch as a freshman. Long look from White. Breaking ball called. Strike on the outside corner makes it one and one. Campy has played a lot of outfield so far. Takes over at third base in this game for Lance Phillips, who is the sole batter not in the lineup for Wells. As the fastball is looped right back to the pitcher and White looks over to second, throws on to first just in time. Got him with the tag as it was a throw a little bit up the first baseline. Caraba had to step off the bag. And the express dugout is not happy. Looks like they're saying that he didn't get the tag. And Ryan Stevens in the third base coach's box. Fired up as well. So a runner on second base and two outs. After the ground out from Campy. Brings up James Camacho who singled and scored in the fifth. First pitch breaking ball low.
Camacho one for two with a strikeout. As White delivers home 1 0. Fastball in the dirt. Gets a step away from Murphy. Young had his momentum carrying towards third base, but pumps the brakes and heads back to second. Can get quite far enough away from Murphy, who will head out to the mound for a visit with his right hander. After two straight balls to the seven hitter Camacho. As Murphy departs, heads back to his post behind home plate. And Camacho, who has got hits in both ends of this doubleheader. Been a great couple of weeks at the plate for Camacho, actually. Here's the 2 0. Fastball popped foul on the right side of the infield. Camacho's actually got five straight games with a hit now. And coming in pretty limited at bats, getting the starts in both these games today, but only 13 total games, 26 total at bats entering today. 2 1. Grounded sharply, foul down the right line, right field line. Right by the first base coach's box and all the way down to the corner. Putting together a strong at bat here. Runner on second. Two outs in the bottom of the sixth. Wells down by two. Game tying run in the batter's box. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Breaking ball just upstairs, and the count goes full. So this will be a big payoff pitch. White. With two outs and a runner on second. The 3 2. Fastballs roped into center field, sending Mersman a step back. Now ranges in and retires the side. Runner left on second base after the single from Young. Still 4 2. Alfred State leads as we head to the top of the seventh on AMCC TV. Back in the top of the seventh inning, 4-2 to the lead for Alfred State. Zach Kronk back out on to work for Wells. He'll face Elijah Barinas to lead it off, and this one is laced in a deep left center, sending the left fielder McLean back towards the wall, and he tracks it down on the warning track for out number one. Long fly ball off the bat of Barina, Barinas, but a quick first out. On the deep fly ball here in the top of the seventh to bring up the three hitter Tyler Korski, who's walked twice. Flew out to left field in his soul at bat in the scorebook. As the first pitch breaking ball called a strike at the bottom of the zone out of the hand of Kronk. Seven straight retired by Zach Kronk, getting back to the fifth inning. Here's the breaking ball just inside. He's only allowed two hits 
making four and a third innings of work of relief as the 1 1. Breaking ball just low and away. And Kronk is a relief pitcher. He came in for Haynes. Hasn't gotten that much length in the season. He's thrown four innings three times. Here's a fastball. Called strike on the outside corner. His last outing was a gem and his longest. It came against Mount Aloysius. Four innings, three hits, zero runs with two strikeouts against the current top team of the conference. Breaking ball outside. Makes the count full. That was a 10-3 loss, but Kronk came in from the bullpen and just locked it down. As the 3-2 breaking ball is now foul towards the on-deck circle. Where Jack Carabo waits. Kronk hasn't allowed an earned run over his last two outings. Before Aloysius, it was two and a third against Greensburg. Another one foul back. Three and two on Korski. As Kronk rocks and fires. Three, two again. Fastball called strike three on the outside corner. Strikeout number four for Zach Kronk, who continues to excel in relief. Eight straight retired. And two outs here in the top of the seventh. Thanks for the five years number 44, Jack Carabo. Brings up Jack Carabba. Both teams chirping back and forth here after a first pitch over the head of Caraba. And can't tell if they issued warnings or not, but home plate um umpire gesturing towards both sides. So you would assume what he did talking back and forth with both head coaches is the 1-0 fastball popped on the right side Valinati ranging towards the foul line and he tracks it down in right field to retire the side another three up three down inning for Zach Kronk nine straight retired as we head to the bottom of the seventh for two Alfred State leads Back at the bottom of the seventh inning, 4-2, to two, the lead for Alfred State. And Wells will send 8-9 in the top of the order, starting with John Valinotti into the batter's box. John White back on to work. The righty kicks and fires in the righty-righty matchup. And the first pitch is skied at the deep right field, setting Petery back in front of the warning track. He ranges over just to the left of the foul pole to track it down for out number one. So one pitch, one out here in the seventh where... Getting chippy between both sides. A pitch last inning behind the head of Jack Carabo, who'd been chirping back and forth between 
his Alfred State dugout and the Wells dugout before that. Looks like issue warnings were issued to both sides. As Chris McLean, the nine hitter, digs in from the right side. First pitch out of the hand of White is a breaking ball called a strike at the top of the zone. Warnings were issued to both head coaches. And both teams have been fired up. There's a fastball. McLean is roped into right center field. That's down for a base hit. Petery cuts it off. And that is a one-out single for Chris McLean. His second hit of the day. He's reached base three times today. And the nine hitter is on to bring it to the top of the order. And one of the best one through fours in an order in the AMCC. It starts with Zach Odom. Odom, who's been blazing hot. He's one for three here in game two of this doubleheader. It's the first pitch breaking ball. Called a strike at the top of the zone, but Zach Odom went two for three with a double and a pair of runs scored in game one, which was a 5-2 to two win for the Express. Long pause. White looks over at first. Now comes home with the 0-1. Grounded sharply. Right side of the infield. Walker, the second baseman. On to second for one. On to first in time. 4-6-3. The double play. And White escapes the one-out single with a beauty of a turn. 4-2 Alfred State leads as we head to the top of the eighth on AMCC TV. Zach Kronk back on to work for his fifth inning of relief. That's the most he's gone in his collegiate career. He's retired eight straight, hasn't allowed a run. He's only allowed two hits in relief. He'll face 5-6-7 due up in the Alfred State order, starting off with Joshua Gardner. First pitch skied into shallow right field. Valinati ranging in and tracks it down. One pitch, one out here on the top of the eighth. 4-2 to Alfred State on top. Haven't seen any scoring since the fifth inning when two runs came around for Wells to make this a two-run game as Caleb Walker digs in with one out. Walker one for three on the day. He's 0 for two against Kronk. And the first pitch, the left-handed hitter is popped up foul ground on the left side of the infield in front of the Alfred State dugout. Campy gives it a look, but that will go over top of the Pioneers dugout to make the count 0-1. As Kronk rocks and fires, 0-1, fastball just outside, evens it up 1-1. One one. Walker with four homers, which leads the charge on the Alfred State roster. There's the 1-1 pitch, fastball inside. And all four homers actually came over the first eight games this season for Walker. 2-1 pitch. Breaking ball is roped in a deep right field, sending Valinoni back in front of the warning track. He tracks it down. Took him a long way out to right center field, deepest part of the ballpark, but makes the play fighting the sun as well for out number two. Now batting for Pioneers, number one, Connor Kiefer. Brings up Connor Kiefer, the junior shortstop. He's 0 for 2, but was hit by a pitch in the second and came around to score the first run of the game. 
for the Pioneers. The right-handed hitter takes the first pitch called strike on the outside corner out of the hand of Kronk. Looking to keep this a two-run ball game. The 0-1 is laced foul down the left field line. And out of play goes 0-2. All four runs in the ledger of Jonathan Haynes. Kronk looking to give his offense a chance. Wells down by two. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Breaking ball is laced down the left field line again and just foul. Skipping to the left of the chalk out of the reach of Campy. And the count stays 0-2. Kiefer, who went 0 for 2 in game one of this doubleheader, which was a 5 to 2 express victory. Here's the 0 2 from Kronk. Fastball. Judged outside. The entirety of the Wells defensive alignment took a step to their left towards the first base dugout. Didn't get the call. And the 1 2 now. Fastball dribble. Left side and foul. Can't be picked it up just on top of the third base bag. It was just a chip to the left. And the at-bat extends 1-2. Kronk from Newfield, New York, the junior. Looking to make it 11 straight retired here. Been the biggest surprise out of the Wells bullpen, and it has been a pleasant one for Ryan Stevens and Co. Here's the one-two. Breaking ball looped in a shallow center. Taking a couple steps in is Zach Odom, and he ranges under it to retire the side. Another three-up, three-down inning for Zach Kronk. He's retired 11 in a row. It's 4-2 to two Alfred State as we head to the bottom of the eighth on AMCC TV. Four to two the score. Alfred State on top back in the bottom of the eighth inning. And it'll be Max Odom, the two-hitter, to lead it off for the Express. John White on for his eighth inning of work. He's been spectacular. First pitch to Odom. It was a fastball called strike at the top of the zone. Odom over three. After he went three for four with three RBIs in game one of this doubleheader. It's a first pitch breaking ball, wave and a miss. At the top of the zone, the count goes 0-2. Wells looking for the sweep in this doubleheader. And to move ahead of Alfred State in the conference standings, as the breaking ball is grounded sharply, left side of the infield. Barinas, the third baseman, charges. Long throw across the diamond, just in time for out number one. Wells will have to battle from behind if they want the sweep and if they want to jump over Alfred State, who was the top team in the regular season last year in the AMCC. Jacoby James will step up. He's two for three. With one out. As White rocks and delivers. First pitch. Wave and a miss on the fastball on the outer third. White has only got two strikeouts, but he has been stellar. Seven and a third. One earned run. Two strikeouts. One walk. Has allowed eight hits, but only two runs across in total for Wells. 
as the 0-1 is skied in a deep center field. Mersman takes a few steps back, treks under it for out number two. Now batting for number 27, Aaron Brings up Aaron Izquierdo. He's 0 for 3 on the day, but big game in game one of these doubleheader. He's waiting to get hot. This would be the time. First pitch. Laced in the center field. There it is. Down for a base hit and a two-out single for Izquierdo, who's got now a hit in 11 of his last 12. A two-out single in the bottom of the eighth for Zach Young. 4-2 Alfred stayed on top. In a huge conference game early on in the standings. Eighth game played for Wells in conference play. First pitch to Zach Young is a wave and a miss. Young one for three on the day. Here's the 0-1. Wave and a miss again. That time on the breaking ball on the outside corner. 0-2. With two outs and his carried off of first base. He's got speed. 13 stolen bases on the year. 0-2. Rope foul down the right field line out of play on the fastball. Almost at his shoestring. Action in the Wells bullpen as the 0-2 is fouled off again, this time behind zone plate. Went back to that elevated fastball. The tying run in the batter's box in the form of Young. He's got two homers on the season. 0-2, runner off on the pitch. It's smoked down the right field line. Way foul, but way far off the bat of Young. It's Noah Warner up and throwing in right center field. Cam Heyman pitched the last inning of the third of game one. We'll see if he'd be a candidate to go back out. There was a pickoff attempt over at first. Izquierdo back with a head first dive. O oh, two. Check swing on the breaking ball. Yes, he did. Sends the home plate umpire. Strike three. And again, they had the runner on base, but Wells cannot push him across. Young goes down swinging. It's four to two. Alfred State leads as we head to the top of the ninth on AMCC TV. Entering today, Zach Kronk had never pitched more than four and a third innings of relief in his career. Right now, he's on for his seventh inning of work 
in relief after coming in for Jonathan Haynes in the second. He's thrown six innings, zero earned runs, two hits, four strikeouts, only one walk, four to two. Alfred State leads back in the top of the ninth inning. Kronk back out on to work into the right-handed batter's box. Is Aiden Murphy. First pitch goes skipping to the backstop on the breaking ball to make it 1-0. Murphy two for three on the day with a strikeout. Is the 1-0 a fastball just inside makes it 2-0. 11 straight batters retired by Kronk, who came in for Haynes in the third as the 2-0. Breaking ball, big wave and a miss. Makes it 2-1. Kronk, who entered today with a 2.24 ERA. Obviously, that's going to sky plummet down. Here's a breaking ball ground. It left side of the infield. James, the shortstop, ranges to his left to step. Throws on a first. And Zach Young has to stick his glove as high as he can in the air with the left arm. So reel that one in for out number one. 12 straight retired. Devin Mersman steps in now. The nine man in the order. First pitch breaking ball. Lace down the left field line and foul. To the left of the chalk to make it 0-1. And it is Cam Heyman up and throwing in the Wells bullpen. Mentioned it earlier, but he threw to six batters in game one of these doubleheaders. The 0-1 is grounded sharply left side. James has stepped to his left. The shortstop on a first scoop down to the turf by Zach Young. 13 straight retired by Zach Kronk. And Tyler Petery will step up. Last chance for some insurance for Alfred State. First pitch, grounded sharply. Right side, Odom, the throw. It's high, reeled in by Young, applies the tag. A 1-2-3 inning. 14 straight retired by Zach Kronk. Dominance and relief, 4-2. Alfred State leads, walk off or bust for the Wells Express in the bottom of the ninth on AMCC TV. On to the bottom of the ninth. It's walk-off or bust for the Wells Express. Down 2-4 to four against Alfred State. And back out onto the mound for inning number nine of work. Looking for the complete game. It's John White. And he'll face A.J. Campy, the seven batter. First pitch the right-handed hitter is grounded right back up the middle for a base hit. Skipping over top of the mound. And that will put the tying run in the batter's box for the Express. Well, I was going to mention John White has thrown eight innings. He's only allowed one earned run, two total runs, three strikeouts, one walk, has allowed nine hits. And what's a 4-2 to two game with Alfred State on top? We haven't seen any scoring since both runs came across for Wells in the fifth. With Campy off of first base, Camacho in the right-handed batter's box, first pitch fastball upstairs, and the count goes 1-0. Camacho's one for three. He singled and scored a run back in that fifth inning. Got that rally started. 
Here's the 1 0 to Camacho. Breaking ball low and away. Can't be one for one on stolen base attempts this season off of first base. And Camacho with hits in five straight games. Looking to come up big time. There's the tying run. 2-0. Chop. Left side of the infield. Charging to the third baseman. Marina. Strong throw across the diamond. In time. Picked out of the dirt by Caraba. Off balance was running in towards home plate on that chopper. Fielded it in off balance throw. Caraba had to grab it out of the turf on one hop. Advancing up to second base is Campy, so a runner 180 feet away. John Valinati digs in. Valinati one for two. Also walked and scored a run. Limited at bats lately down the stretch. With one out and a runner on second. First pitch, breaking ball low and away. Valinati looking to come up big time. I mentioned the playing time hasn't been exactly where he probably wants it these last couple of weeks. There's a 1 0. He's upstairs. The count goes 2 0 because of primarily some young freshmen that have worked their way into the lineup. He started four of the first five to begin this season, then limited over the last couple of weeks. He's got power, though. And he's the tying run. 2 0. Fastball roped into right field, sending Petery back a couple of steps. Tagging from second to third is Campy, and he's there without a throw. But the Express down to their final out. And it'll come to Chris McLean. McLean, two for three. Swinging a hot bat. Can't take him out of this game. Wells has had some clutch pinch hit at bats this season, but McLean will step in, try and take this game himself. Wells down by two in the bottom of the ninth. Two outs and a runner on third base. First pitch breaking ball called strike at the bottom of the zone out of the hand of White who's going for the complete game. He's only thrown 76 pitches. That's probably the most impressive part. It's a swing and a miss on the check swing on the fastball on the inside part of the zone, and the Express are down to their final strike. White delivers home the fastball upstairs, and it goes one and two. Here's the one-two pitch. Fastball. Sky high right side of the infield. Foul grounds giving a chase Caraba. And that'll make it into the grass out of play. McLean two for three here today. Alfred State looks for the split. Wells. Looks for the sweep. In a huge conference game. 1-2. Breaking ball is dished upstairs. Evens it at twos. The tying run in the batter's box. In the bottom of the ninth. The 2-2 count. With two outs. Wave and a miss for strike three. Bounces to the catcher. Murphy in the dirt. Throws down to first base to complete the strikeout. And Alfred State. Moves to 10 and 21 on the season, 5 and 5 in conference play. Wells with an exciting game one victory. So the two teams split. Wells falls to 15 and 12 on the year, 3 and 5 in conference play. 4 to 2, your final here in game two. Two tremendously played, clean baseball games between these two sides. And a whole lot of fun here from Aurora. That'll wrap things up. Thank you so much for tuning in throughout the course of this afternoon. A split. 
in the doubleheader between the Express and the Pioneers. Signing off from Aurora, New York, I'm Eli Fishman. Thank you so much for spending your Tuesday afternoon with us.